Wednesday morning on the air, we'll be talking with uh, Dr. Jonathan Tripp or a member of his staff right here on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Better Health with Tripp Family Medicine. We do this every Wednesday between 8 30 and 9 o'clock. And as the doctor likes to say, when was the last time you had a chance to ask a friendly voice some medical advice? We give you that opportunity during that half hour. And so if you have something you're concerned about, when it comes to your health or your family's health or a neighbor's health, please feel free to give us a call during that segment, 736-0300, 736-0300. It was actually the doctor's office that convinced me to go get a flu shot. Well, as I said, I forgot to go get it, but they convinced me to do it, and I may yet. So there you have it. 934, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We're up to 47. And remember, we may see some snow overnight and uh, into tomorrow, too, as well. What we like to do when the doctor or one of his staff members come by is sit down and just have that casual conversation about medicine and health. And we would urge you, as I say, to give us a telephone call. His office is located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office in Twin Falls. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Over the weekend, I came across a number of things that are not being reported to any great extent in mainstream media in this country possibly because they're taking place in Europe and media figures you're so stupid that they they don't tell you about what's going on elsewhere around the world. Well, they've got to show you pictures of squirrels water skiing, right? That's 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 real news, right? That's that that's what people are really looking forward to. At least they feel that way up at the uh, big offices of all of the big news networks and now really at newspapers which have to try to compete with all of those squirrel water skiing stories. What you're not hearing much about is what's going on in Europe right now where that migrant crisis is completely out of hand. And in some parts of Germany, the migrants, thousands of them, have gone missing. No, they're not necessarily missing. They just don't know where they went. They're likely wandering the back roads in small towns across Germany. And there is some concern that one of the far-right political parties which now has about 15% of the support in the country when it had virtually none just a few months ago, could within a year garner enough support, take over the government, and then start booting these migrants and refugees out. In Sweden, which is known to be a very calm, pleasant, peaceful country, even their hockey players like to just pat each other on the back and opponents on the back and say, hey, way to go. Well, they don't say it like that. It's more like, (laughs) however they speak in Sweden. Swedes apparently are so upset that far-right political parties, which really were non-entities there for decades, are now making strong inroads as well and could end up controlling a good quarter of the uh, parliament in about a year. And in fact, many places that have been housing Muslim refugees have been set, set afire, set ablaze in Sweden. And most of that is happening in the areas where these right-wing political parties have their strongest support. One of the leaders of one of these countries was saying the other day, uh, one of the countries in Central Europe, that they were going to build a wall. And when European Union members said, oh, that's very harsh, she said, all right, we'll put together a fence. Will that make you feel better if we call it a fence instead of a wall? (laughs) So they're taking this very, very seriously over there. And one prediction is that in uh, in Sweden that the government could come collapsing down altogether. This liberal policy of opening up the gates and claiming that borders are irrelevant, not that that would ever happen here, is driving people into the arms of political parties. They may not quite be as nasty as the Italian fascists or, or, or the, uh, the Nazis, but they are driving people more and more into the arms of these political parties. You could see blood flowing in the streets. And when that happens... Then they're going to bring in the U.N. with all of its third world troops to put that down. And then they will crush Western civilization once and for all. And we're told, well, we don't have to worry about that because the numbers of them here are so few. For now. For now. For now. We have a caller with us. It's 937. You're on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310 com. Bill, isn't it interesting that it was four months ago, roughly, that the news media was uh, reporting on how Merkel and that group thought it was such a great idea to bring these people in? And in four months, it has shown what a catastrophe it is. They're destroying Europe. 
Yeah, and in, in a matter of what, 120 days, they've managed to destroy whatever was left of Europe. When you look at uh, some of the news media over there, there are German people on the streets that don't recognize their own town. And, but it's only taken four months. One of these towns people, has a population a little over 100 there, getting 750 of these migrants. How can you maintain any sense of a Germ Germanic culture in that community? Well, what we need to re remember here as, as a member of the United States is this. England is about the size of Utah. And Germany, I don't know what state it would equate to, but that country, that state, if you will, has almost been taken over in four months. England, as we've talked about many times before, 4% of that population is Muslim, and they're controlling the laws practically. And so for us to say, well, it hasn't, it isn't going to affect us. Well, that's because we're much larger, but it's the, the methodology is the same and it's very, very effective. Just a matter of time before we see it happening here. I thank you. Thank you very much for the telephone call. Yeah, it is. It is a very disturbing situation. You know, I, I was thinking the other day, the reason we, we don't have a lot of people running for council seats in Twin Falls critical of this program simply is this. A lot of these people come here and they settle here and they've never been able to vote before, so they take that very seriously. So the uh, the refugees who become citizens will turn out in large numbers, maybe 90, 95% and vote in a local election. Meanwhile, half the people out there who are complaining about it, that it's happening, won't bother to show up. So if you're a politician, you've done the math. No wonder so many of them refuse to criticize the program. More on this subject just ahead. It's 940. Now, elections across the Magic Valley, and I've said this before, I don't think that they're going to turn on this issue. I, I, I just don't see that happening. Now, we've been focused on Twin Falls, but a lot of these people are being settled throughout the valley, not necessarily uh, just in the city. I, I still believe that it, it's, it, it, well, it's a big issue. It has little impact on what takes place tomorrow. I'm not giving any endorsements out here and not trying to uh, convince anyone how to vote because... You can make up your own mind. Not like a newspaper which says, we over here, being smarter than the rest of you, have a list of people we want you to vote for. Doesn't happen here on the radio. Rarely, rare, there are some occasions where I found someone who I really am behind and uh, and said, you know, I'm going to vote for that person and, and been pretty honest that I think that other people should take a look at them, but not in this case. I'm just not getting involved. But I, I'm telling you right now that if we go down the road another 10 years and you have a large influx of people who are coming here from elsewhere, they do come from countries where they haven't had an opportunity to vote. So suddenly they come here and if nothing else, even if they don't appreciate a lot of our laws and customs, they appreciate the fact that they get a say in how to run the operation. So if you have these newcomers and they become citizens eventually, some of them will in four, five, six years, five years, right? I mean, it's likely going to happen. And they start showing up in droves to vote. You know, back in the 1950s, over 80% of Americans of voting age were actually voting. And now that number is below 50%. And in tomorrow's elections, the numbers will be maybe 10, 15%. And it really comes down to getting your supporters to the polls. Sometimes just your family and friends coming out to the polls can make a difference. On the other hand, if you're a candidate and you're a little concerned about the refugees who are coming here and Maybe you are concerned about the vetting process and you don't think that we've done enough. Still, you've got to remember, it's these, these refugees and immigrant populations that actually take it seriously when it comes to elections and they'll show up and vote in large numbers, whereas your traditional Americans, you know, the native-born Americans, are not coming out in big numbers. So if you're in an election that's going to be decided on just a, you know, a few hundred votes, or even if that, maybe it'll be decided on a dozen votes. They don't want to offend any of those people. What do, who do you mean by those people? All right, the foreigners. How's that? The foreign-born. Does that make you happy? But I can see how that is having an impact on local elections. 946. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. On News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 46. We have a caller with us, and you're on the air. Good morning, Bill. How are you doing today? Wonderful. What's on your mind? Well, I I think you and a lot of us that are concerned with this, uh, bringing the people into the Twin Falls Valley has made a difference. I've noticed 
uh, the paper and CSI cannot put out enough ads trying to do PR work. It's a, every other page in the paper is CSI, and every other commercial is we've been here for this long, and we plan to be here for this much longer. But I think they're doing damage control. I just wanted to thank you for doing your part. So. Well, the other part of that is I can see celebrating your 50th anniversary as an institution, but but you're right. I, I do think that you know how much more – obviously they're still going to be here. Where would they go? I mean, you can't pick up that huge campus and move it away. Correct. And they do a great job, but they're not impervious to our opinions. And I think we need to just keep keep on the road we're going, and I think we'll make a difference. But thank you for what you do. Hey, thank you much for the call, sir. 947, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning. Rush Limbaugh coming up. Rush is going to be just talking a lot of baseball today, isn't he? <laughs> His team won the World Series. Now, there's a story in baseball that says uh, small market teams cannot compete with the big market teams. So, therefore, the New York Yankees and Boston Red Sox should win the World Series, one of them, every year. Or teams like the the Washington Nationals, who should have been there for crying out loud, but weren't. And I've got my Philadelphia Phillies sweatshirt on today. I'm not a Phillies fan, but it's my most comfortable sweatshirt. I'm actually a Nationals fan, and, and they're big rivals. But... Kansas City is one of the smallest markets in baseball, and despite all of this talk about the, how they can't compete, they ended up winning the World Series, and they did it quite handily, four games to one. And Rush Limbaugh used to work for the Royals many, many years ago. He will be obviously talking about that today, if not for the entire program. He'll have at least some thoughts on that. He's coming up following the news at 10 o'clock. Sean Hannity following Fox News at 1 o'clock this afternoon, and of course Glenn Beck following news after 4 o'clock, Dave Ramsey tonight from 7 until 10. Also have coming up in just a few minutes, the, uh, the well, Mike Gallagher coming up in a few minutes. Sad thing to note here is it was Mike Huckabee for a while, and then it's Mike Gallagher, but you may also remember, this is the report that replaced Paul Harvey. And when Paul Harvey really was stepping away and standing back, uh, he had, uh, was it uh, Gil, uh, anyway, what was it Gil Gross, but he also had Mitt Romney hosted it for a while, and also... Um, we had uh, we had Fred Thompson hosting the hosting the segment. Fred Thompson was an amazing man. Um, when he got into the election race back in 2007, 2008, I thought, oh boy, this is all over with now, because he had such a great backstory. This is a guy at 17 who married his high school sweetheart, got kicked off his high school school basketball team, and then had no prospects in life. Ended up working several minimum wage jobs to support his family and put himself through law school, and then just skyrocketed in his career, not only in politics, but in acting as well. Uh, and just very sad to see him go because he seemed to be such a straight-up, stand-up guy. We've got, uh, we've got, in fact, Gallagher on the way, brought to you exclusively by the financial advisors at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls. The telephone number is 736-6563. As I was mentioning, you know, this, this segment, Mike Gallagher before that, uh, Mike Huckabee, and uh, we've had over the years, uh, of course, Paul Harvey, the longest running uh, during the course of the mornings here at KLIX and on radio stations across the country. But among those people who also hosted the segment were Mitt Romney for a time, as well as Fred Thompson. And I was speaking about the late Fred Thompson during the course. I have not, by the way, seen one of Somebody was very good about clearing that out on television. I haven't seen one of his reverse mortgage commercials this morning. So People managed to pull those out of their inventories, and so you won't see him popping up there any longer. He had had cancer before, and I didn't realize he'd had a recurrence of it, and I was quite shocked when I got a bulletin yesterday that said the man had died. He had tremendous talent, not just in politics, but as well as an actor. And this was a man who had no formal training as an actor as well. He had perhaps, too, one of the most beautiful voices, the most melodious voices you could ever hear, both in politics and acting. We know that we have challenges, always have, always will. But we also know that we live in the freest, strongest, most generous, and prosperous nation in the history of the world, and we're thankful for that. What's this? My letter of resignation. You obviously need someone who's more in tune with your point of view. If I'd wanted a yes man, you'd have been out on your butt a long time ago. I need someone who can tell me when my britches are unbuttoned. You took me off the case. You don't have confidence in my judgment. This is not mathematics, Jack. If every one of these cases could be prosecuted by applying some equation in a book, then you couldn't get me out of bed in the morning. 
Now, you all heard of Japanese inspection. Japanese inspection. You see, when the Japs get in a load of lettuce that they're not sure they want to let in the country, why, they just let it sit on the docks until they get good and ready to look at it. But then, of course, it's all gone rotten. Ain't nothing left to inspect. In other words, lettuce is a perishable item. Like you two monkeys. <laughs> Tremendous career and his acting career got started when he played himself in a movie. He had defended uh, a woman in, in his home state of Tennessee, actually born in Alabama, but grew up in Tennessee, defended her in a case, and it became a movie several years later. He played himself, and that brought him to the attention of people who realized he's got some real acting talent. And he didn't know it. When he was serving as a counsel on the Watergate Committee way back in the 1970s, he was assisting Senator Howard Baker from Tennessee. He is the fellow, Thompson is the fellow, who discovered the White House taping system and asked that question of the fellow Alexander Butterfield, who was actually the man in charge of the taping system, asked the question about it at the hearing and then blew open the doors on the fact that these tapes existed. Without the tapes, Richard Nixon would have continued serving in the White House two two full terms and then uh, been on his way out the door and off to retirement. But because of the tapes, it ended his presidency. Just a little quick note on that. When you compare that to what happened today, where Hillary Clinton managed to whitewash a great many of her emails from her server, and then she's been playing what you call a, a Chinese checkers, or what's the game there? Shell game, that's it. Shell game with her server. Uh, she did what Nixon did. Media hated Nixon for not, uh, well, he didn't burn the tapes, but they hated him uh, for, uh, and if he had, they would have hated him worse. But Hillary Clinton gets away with doing what Nixon didn't do, and media loves her. I haven't figured that one out yet. Anyway, if I could uh, tell Fred Thompson's family my condolences, I would do it. I'm not going to get an opportunity. Long, long flight to get to Tennessee for that funeral. But great American and gone, I think, even at 73, a little too soon from this earth. News is coming up next. Bill Colley with you. And God willing, the creek don't rise. I get to do this all over again tomorrow morning. We have an author on with us tomorrow. He's going to be talking about how you can better invest for a safer retirement. In fact, he's combining news reporting with investing advice, and it's called News Vesting. He'll, he'll be on the air with us tomorrow, as well as Steve Millington, the chairman of the Twin Falls Republican Party. Hope you have a great day.